Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to discuss on correlation receiver. In my previous videos on detection and estimation, I have been talking about how a digital transmitter can transmit at each time one of the input signals which is represented by SI of T where I takes on the value 1 to capital M. This transmission conveys to us which of the capital M messages we want to send. At the receiver, we receive the signal SI of T that is corrupted by noise. So, the received signal X of T can be given as the input signal SI of T plus the noise component represented by W of T. Since the received signal is corrupted by noise, it is not possible to directly decide on to which of the M input signals was transmitted. This in fact becomes the objective behind constructing a receiver. Let us now talk about correlation receiver. In my previous video, I have already discussed on maximum likelihood detector. There, we computed the inner product between the received signal X of T and the transmitted signal SK of T for making the decision. This inner product is nothing but the correlation between the received signal X of T and the transmitted signal SK of T. Now, we wish to build a receiver that performs minimum calculations while producing the best results. Since the receiver relies on the computation of correlation between the transmitted signal and the received signal to make a decision, this receiver is called the correlation receiver. If the input set of signals represented by SI of T are non-orthogonal, then we can reduce the amount of multiplications and additions done at the receiver by correlating the received signal x of t with the basis functions represented by phi k of t. We should note there are capital N basis functions. The correlation of the received signal x of t with the basis function phi k of t gives a coefficient represented as x k equals inner product of the received signal x of t and the basis function phi k of t. And this is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of t into phi k of t dt. And this is to be computed for every possible value of k where k varies from 1 to capital N. Since there are n basis functions, there will be n such coefficients generated. And these coefficients are represented as xk where k once again takes on the value between 1 to capital N. The vector of such correlation outputs is defined as the received signal vector x and is given by x equals x1, x2, etc, etc till xn transpose. Now here x represents the received signal vector and each of the coefficients or elements of these vectors are the outputs of each of the correlator. Now that we have computed the correlator outputs, we can now compute the estimate of the received signal which is represented as x cap of t using the equation x cap of t equals summation k varying from 1 to capital N minus 1 xk into phi k of t. A receiver that performs these operations what we have defined in the previous equations is called as a correlation receiver. Starting with the correlation receiver we note that for an AWGN channel and for the case when the transmitted signals SI of T are equally likely, the optimum receiver consists of two subsystems. The first one is called as the detector and the second one is called as the vector receiver. Let us now briefly discuss on each of these subsystems. I'll start with the detector part first. As previously illustrated in the beginning of this video, the detector consists of a bank of n product integrators which are also called as correlators. Each of these correlators are supplied with a corresponding set of coherent reference signals which are the orthonormal basis functions. It should be noted that these basis functions are generated locally at the receiver. Each correlator generates a coefficient xj for j varying from 1 to capital N that represents the correlation between the received signal x of t and the corresponding basis function phi j of t. This was previously indicated in equation 2. Coming back, since there are a bank of n such correlators that operate on the received signal x of t, we obtain n coefficients. These n coefficients are then used to produce the observation vector x as per the equation 3 here. 
That is about the detector part. Let us now move on to the vector receiver. It should be noted that the vector receiver is implemented in the form of a maximum likelihood detector that operates on the observation vector x to produce an estimate m cap of the transmitted symbol m i. And this has to be performed in such a way that it would minimize the average probability of symbol error. Let us recall the decision rule of the maximum likelihood detector. We have vector x lies inside the region zi if summation j varying from 1 to capital N xj into skj minus 1 by 2 into ek is maximum for k equals to i. This is the decision rule used by the maximum likelihood detector. In equation 5 here, the first term represents the correlation between the received signal x of t and the transmitted signal sk of t. The second term is the scaled version of the energy of the transmitted signal sk of t. In my previous video, I have elaborately discussed on the maximum likelihood detector. In that video, I have illustrated how we end up with this equation as the decision rule. I would like to request you to kindly refer to that video before you continue with this one as the construction of the vector receiver is purely based on this decision rule. If you already have watched that video, let us start with the discussion on the vector receiver now. As per equation 5, the n elements of the observation vector are first multiplied by the corresponding n elements of each of the capital M signal vectors represented by S1, S2, etc. till S capital M. The resulting products are successively summed, that is why we have a summation here, in accumulators to form the corresponding set of inner products. This complete term is nothing but the inner product. Let us look into this part in the diagram here. So here we have the received signal vector and the received signal vector is multiplied by the corresponding signal vectors S1, S2 till S capital M. However, we note that there are only capital N coefficients. So we are going to multiply the N coefficients of the received signal vector with the corresponding elements of the transmitted signal vector. These products are then accumulated to create the summation term. So the output of the accumulator is nothing but the inner product between the signal vector S1 and the received vector X. Then as per the decision rule of the maximum likelihood detector, we are supposed to subtract Ek by 2 from the inner product of the received signal as well as the transmitted signal. This part is shown here. So here we have the inner product between the signal vector SK and the received vector X. Then we are going to subtract the corresponding signal energy divided by 2 at each branch. These operations that is the multiplication, accumulation and lastly the addition will result in a number at the end of each branch that is at exactly this place. Finally, the system compares the outputs from each branch and selects a number that is the largest. That is why we have a block which says select largest. And when we do so, we are going to then create a corresponding decision on one of the transmitted message signals. And this is represented as the estimate M cap. For illustration purpose, let us take a simple scenario to explain this process. Consider that the transmitted signal was S1 of T. As per the principle behind the maximum likelihood detector, if the transmitted signal is S1 of t, then the number produced after performing all these operations by the first or the uppermost branch of the vector receiver will be the largest. Hence, a decision will be made in favor of signal S1 of t or symbol M1. So, M cap will be equal to M1. So, the optimum receiver so defined which consists of both the detector part as well as the vector receiver part is called as the correlation receiver. Well, with that, we come to the end of this video on correlation receiver. If you like this video, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.